This is the tutorial for Chapter 9, Section 1, Day Number 2, Quadratic Graphs and Their Properties. And so the first question is going to ask us to order each group of quadratic functions from widest to narrowest graph. Well, the first thing I'm going to look at is when we're dealing with these functions, they're all going to be in this form. y equals ax squared. Or instead of y, they might use function notation, f of x equals ax squared. So I'm going to refer to this a term. And this is what's going to determine, this term determines, <coughs> determines the width, the width of the parabola. And so let's try to figure out which one's going to end up being wider and which one's not as wide. So let's take a look <coughs> at these values. So here we've got y equals 4x squared. So if I just look at a couple points on a t-chart here and so I'll go ahead and just put in the 4x squared here and then a y term and let's take a look at zero. Whenever I plug in zero, no matter what value it is, you see how it's going to end up making zero for the y value because zero squared times by four gives me zero. And so for all of them, each of them, they all have zero for the output when my input is zero and you'll see that. And so we'll go ahead and write all those in there. So we've got the negative 2x squared. Plug in 0, we get an output of 0. And for y equals negative 6x squared, we go ahead and plug in a 0, and we'll end up getting 0. So what's going to make it wide? Well, let's find out. Let's go ahead and plug in a 2. And so if I plug in 2 for x, I go ahead and square that. You see I get 4. But then i got to multiply it by 4, and that gives me 16. And so if I do the same thing for this one, I plug in 2, and I go ahead and square it, and then I've got to, I get the same exact thing. I get 4, but then I have to multiply it by negative 2, and I get negative 8. And for this one, when I plug in 2, go ahead and square it again, I get the same exact number. I get 4. 4 squared it times, or 2 squared is 4. 4 times negative 6 makes negative 24. So which one's wider? Well, if we look at it, if we think about the graph here, I'll go ahead and put 0, 0 this point here. If I go over 2 spaces, I have to go up 16 spaces. So either direction, I end up going up 16 spaces. And so it's going to be very narrow here. And for this one, it goes the other direction, but you can kind of see what it looks like. So here's 0 and I go over two spaces to the right or to the left, I go down just eight spaces. And so it's not going to be as narrow here. It's not as narrow because I didn't have to go down as far. And this one, I start at zero, zero, and I go over those two spaces, and I end up having to go down 24 spaces. So it's much further I have to go down. So you can see how I went over the same number of spaces, but I had to go down much further with this one. So this one is the most narrow one. So this is very narrow. And they're all kind of narrow in this case, but this one is the narrowest. And so that's what we'll call it, where this one is the widest. And so how did it work? Well, we had y equals negative 6x squared. And we're going from the widest to the narrowest. So actually, I need to fix that. So we're going y equals negative 2x squared. And then, fix my 2, negative 2x squared. And then I had y equals 4x squared. And then the narrowest, the narrowest one was y equals negative 6x squared. So what made it narrow? Well, what made it narrow is the a term. That determines the width. And so what we saw is if the absolute value absolute value of a. So it doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative. So absolute value just makes it positive. So the absolute value that is going to end up being the narrowest, absolute value of the narrowest is the largest number. So the absolute value that is largest will end up being the narrowest. The absolute value that's the smallest will be the widest. So the absolute value of the smallest will be the widest. So that's fine for 
problems that are just integers, but we also have some that are fractions as well. So let's take a look at those. So if I go ahead and try these values, we'll go ahead and plug in my numbers into our table here and just pick some values to make the problem easy. So we'll pick zero again. And you see, no matter what value, no matter what the equation is, whenever you plug in zero, we're going to end up getting a y value of zero since there's nothing being added to the x squared term. But if I plug in one, I'll try one this time. I square one, I get one. And when I multiply by a sixth, I get a sixth. And that uh, is going to be pretty small. It's definitely a, a small number. Let's check out the next one. And so if I go ahead and plug in 0 again, I get 0 for my output when my input is 0. But when I plug in 1, this time I'm multiplying 1 by a fourth, and I only get a fourth, which is actually wider. See, there's less parts to make a whole, so it's going to be a wider number. And then if I plug in a 1 half, or a 0 in for this 1 half x squared, I end up getting a output of 0 again, but when I go ahead and plug in 1, I square it, I get 1 again, but then I have to multiply it by a half and I get a half. So you see how this is the narrowest here. It's the narrowest, and this is going to end up being the widest, and we'll be able to see that when I graph this. See, if I go ahead and graph this, start at 0. Well, if I go over 1 space, I can only go up a sixth of a space. So a sixth is really close to that, to the x-axis there. So it's going to end up looking like this. Where when I go ahead and try this next one, I'll make that line a little bit straighter. And I'll keep the values about the same distance apart. So if I go over one here, oops, let me go ahead and fix that. When I go over one, I end up going up a fourth. So it's quarter of the way up. So you can see how it's going up a little bit faster. And then when I try the one half, I end up going up a half of space. So you can see I'm up further. And so that is going to end up being more narrow in this case. So what could we conclude? Well, I know the answer goes this way. We're going from the widest to the narrowest again. So those one half x squared and then it goes y equals 1 quarter x squared. And then the last one's y equals 1 sixth x squared. So what made it more narrow? It's the a term again that determines the width. And so what we can say is the absolute value of the, uh, the absolute value that is closest to 0, we'll say. absolute value that is closest to zero is the narrowest, or is the widest. The one that gets further away is going to end up being more narrow when we're dealing with fractions. So we could say if a equals a fraction We'll say the absolute value A that is closest to zero is the widest. And so that's what we're looking for there. So that's going to help us determine what these graphs are going to end up looking like. So let's take a look at another problem here. Here we have to graph these quadratics. And so what we're going to end up using is what I call a parent graph. And the parent graph is just that part that we were looking at, the y equals ax squared. And it doesn't matter whether it's y or f of x. And so it's the a term that's changing things. And so when I look at this one, if I go ahead and plug in some values, and so here I've got x squared plus 1. So what's changing it is that positive 1. And see, if typically when I plug in 0 for x, I get 0 for my output. But here I don't because I have this extra term I have to add on. See, I have 0 squared plus 1. You see, that's going to bring me up one space where if I plug in a 1 or a negative 1, it doesn't matter whether it's a positive or a negative 1, because when you square a positive, you get a 1, you get the same number as when you square a negative, but then you have to add 1 to it, and so that's going to give me 2. So again, when you plug in positive or negative 2, so plus or minus 2, and you square that, you always get 4, and then you have to add 1, that's going to bring me up 
five. So every single time, you always end up going up one higher than where it would have been if that one was not there. So if I was to sketch this, go ahead and draw an axis in here, it would end up looking like this. So it goes up one space. If I go over zero, I go up one. Over one, I have to go up two spaces. Over two, from the origin again, I go up five spaces. So that's two, three, four, five. So it's the same shape as the other quadratics that are just x squared. The difference is, is that it gets shifted up one space. So what this is, is the y-intercept. And the y-intercept is whenever you set x equal to 0. See, so if I set x equal to 0, I find the y-intercept by setting x equal to 0. That's what I did with linear equations. It works the same with quadratics. See, again, that f of x is the same thing as y. So if I set that equal to 0, I'm left with just 1. And so it's the same graph. So I have the same quadratic. It's just shifted up one space. So looking at this one, I know the y-intercept is 1. So the y-intercept is 1 because I set x equal to 0, and that's what I get. So already I know the graph ends up looking something like this. Without even thinking about where the values are, I know it starts up one space. That's going to end up being the vertex in this case. And so what I can do is I can figure out now how it's changing here. And so when I go ahead and plug in some numbers, 2x squared, I don't even have to add that extra 1 right now because I know, I know it's going to tell me where to go in the y direction from the vertex. So I'm going to say y from vertex, from that vertex. So I'm not going to use the coordinate plane to, so I'm not going to start from the origin, I'm going to start from the vertex, and that's going to tell me how many spaces up I need to go. So you see, if I plug in 0, again, I just get 0, and that's going to bring me up uh, 0 spaces from the vertex, which is 1. But if I go ahead and plug in a plus or minus 1, I have to double that value. So plus or minus 1, I square that, I get 1 times 2 makes 2. So from the vertex, over one space in the x direction, I'm going to end up going up two spaces. And you see, that would be the same thing as if I went ahead and added on that extra 1 here. You see, 1 squared times by 2 gives me 2, plus 1 gives me 3. And that's how many spaces I am up from the origin. So if I plug in a 2, I go ahead and square that first of all. And that gives me 4, and then I multiply by 2, and that gives me 8. So from the vertex, I'm going to go over 2, up 8. So there's 2, 4, 6, 8. So I've got those points. And again, there's symmetry allows me to find the other points pretty quickly. Again, nice smooth curve through those. Hopefully yours looks better than mine. Let's take a look at this last one. It's a fraction this time. So I know the y-intercept is up 5 spaces. So I'm going to start my graph right here, my x-axis. And I'll go this way for my y. And I know I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 right there. That's going to be the y-intercept, and that's my vertex, too. So this is the vertex, which is also the y-intercept in this case. In this case. And I know it is because I've got, I've got uh, just a negative 1 half x squared, just an x squared term, and this positive 5. So if I had an x term, then things change. We'll see that tomorrow. So let's go ahead and find out what it looks like. Well, the paragraph goes this way, negative 1 half x squared. And then, again, this y value is from the vertex. So y from vertex. And so what if I, if I go ahead and plug in a 1 and I square that, positive or negative, I'm going to multiply by a negative 1 half. And that's going to give me negative 1 half. So negative negative one half. And so I know if I go over one space, I just go down a half a space. So it looks like that. Where if I go over two spaces, so I square two, I get four, no matter whether it be positive or negative, and then I have to multiply by negative one half. And so a half of four makes negative two. So what that tells me to do is go down two. So the negative sign here just means down, down two. And so I'm going over two spaces from the vertex again, and then over down two, one, two. And that's where that ends up going. 
and that's what our graph will look like. So it's a little bit wider because I'm multiplying by a half rather than by two or by one even. So that's what graphs look like. Let's take a look at the last type of problem here. And on this one, it asks us, it says the physics experiment, the class drops a golf ball from a bridge toward the pavement below. The bridge is 75 uh -huh. feet high. And here's the equation. Notice how it starts at the y-intercept. The y-intercept is the beginning point. It's the beginning point. Remember how in when we dealt with linear equations, now this is a linear equation, it was y equals mx plus b. b stands for the beginning point. And so that's what we have here. That was the y-intercept right there. So our y-intercept is 75. And so we're starting up, uh, up above the ground. This is going to be height in feet. And this is time. And we'll call this time in seconds. I believe it is. Let's go ahead and write that in there. Seconds. And let's, we have to go up 75, so let's go by fives. So there's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. So right at the top here, that's where we're starting. And now we're going to follow what happens here. So let's go ahead and we're going to plug in some T values. So we don't have X this time, we have T. And so when I plug in 1, uh, and I don't have negative time, so I just have to have just a positive. So it's positive because there's no negative time. No negative time. Because that would be before time occurred. And so let's find out what our height is. Well, you just do 75 minus 16. And so that ends up giving us 65. So it'd be 59. And then from there we go over 1 down 59 feet. It's going to put us right about there. And then if I square 2, then that's going to end up giving me 2, uh, 4, so it's negative uh, 64. And then, oops, negative 64 there. And then I have to add the 75. And so when I do that, I end up getting 11. So down 2 spaces or over two spaces, I'm going to end up going up 11. So I'm right there. So I'm almost down all the way there. And so if I go three seconds, and so that's 9 times 16, and so that gives me 144. And that's negative plus the 75. Well, that's going to give me a negative number. And so minus 75 from that gives me negative 69. So I know I'm already down below that axis. And so it's going to look something like this. It goes down, again, a smooth curve. And it's going to go right through to a little bit beyond. So maybe about, and this is just a guess, it's about 2.2 to 2.3 seconds. Somewhere right in that range there. We'll look at this next one. Same sort of thing. This time we're flying an airplane. 1,000 feet above the ground. And you have a package. Or it looks like they must be dropping a package, food and medicine, uh, from 1,000 feet. So let's go by tens here. So this is going to be 20. 40, 50, actually I'm going to have to go by hundreds, so let's fix that, since I have to get up to a thousand, hundred, uh, let's see, I'll go, this is a hundred, so this will be 200 here, so 200, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, nine, let's see here, two, four, this should have been six. So let me fix all these real quick. And I'll make that four look a little better too. All right, so now we're set. So 400, 600, 800, 900, 600, and 1,000. Okay, so there's where we start. And so now we'll take a look at our graph here. So T, and I'll plug in my numbers here. Negative 16 T squared plus 1,000. And we'll come up with our heights. And so you can see when I plug in 1, we get negative 16 plus 1,000. And that ends up giving us a 984. So we're not going down too far. So there's 900. So 984 is going to be pretty close. Again, this is time in seconds. And then, again, this is 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. And 10 there. And then if I go 2 seconds, 
That's going to give us 4. That makes negative 64 plus 1,000. And then we have 1,000 minus 64. That's going to give us 936. We still haven't gone down too far. So we're still above the 900 mark. But then when we go and plug in 3, 3 squared makes 9. And 9 times 16 gives us 144. And so when we do 144 minus 1,000, and that gives us 856. So now we're starting to move down a little bit more. So 856, somewhere in there. So let's move up a little bit. Let's try 6. And let's square 6, and that's 36 times by 16. And that gives us, so again, that's 16 times by 6 squared plus 1,000. And then we'll subtract the that value and we end up getting 424. So now over six spaces up 424 spaces. So somewhere right in that range. And let's try maybe seven. So seven <coughs> is 49. 49 times 16. And make 784 minus, so seven made 784 when I did the work and that's negative plus a thousand. So minus 1,000 from that value, that gives me 216. So we're still above. So over here, let's fix that. So 7, we're at two, uh, 216, just right above that value. And then let's try 8. So we'll go 64 times by 16, and that makes 1,024. So now we're, now we're below. So it's below 1,000, or below 8 seconds, because that gives me negative 24. So I know it's going to be somewhere right in that range, and this is what our graph ends up looking like. <coughs> and so it's going to be pretty close to 8, but not quite 8. So I'd say pretty close to about maybe 7.9 seconds is the length of time it takes for it to hit the ground. So those are the types of problems you'll see on tonight's homework. Good luck.